Now, while I get thousands of wonderful comments and feedback from each and every you every week, I still have some skeptics out there, and rightfully so. So today I want to give you a little bit of background about myself and explain where the heck I came up with all this information I share week in and week out. Spreading the truth about health and longevity is my passion in life. And I assure you that I only share information that is backed by science, not just my opinion. So just like everyone else, I've had an interesting journey to get to this point. I've worked in medicine for over 50 years now. I was an undergraduate at Yale University. I got my MD degree at Medical College of Georgia. I trained at the University of Michigan in both general surgery and cardiothoracic surgery. I was a fellow at the National Institutes of Health in heart surgery and research. I was a senior registrar at Great Ormond Street a Hospital for Sick Children in London. I began as a professor at the University of Maryland in Baltimore and spent the rest of my career as professor and chairman of cardiothoracic surgery at Loma Linda University here in Southern California. My partner, Leonard Bailey, and I pioneered infant and pediatric heart transplant. He and I, he's sadly deceased now, did more infant and pediatric heart transplants than anybody in the world. Not only that, I am widely recognized as one of the fathers of robotic heart surgery, the father of minimally invasive heart surgery. I have two operations that bear my name, the Gundry mini sternotomy and the Gundry lateral tunnel, a growing tunnel for children who are born without parts of their heart. My device, the Gundry retrograde cardioplegia cannula is still the most widely used device to protect patients' hearts during heart surgery. And that's just that. I've published over 300 papers in peer-reviewed journals. I've been on journal review boards. I've been on the review board of the American Heart Association, the American College of Cardiology. I am an academic researcher in 1995 when I met a gentleman who I call Big Ed in all my books. He's a real person from Miami, Florida, 48 years old, who miraculously reversed blockages in his coronary arteries, which were deemed inoperable, even by me, with a diet pretty much of his own creation and supplements that he bought, quite frankly, willy-nilly from a health food store. And in looking at how Big Ed had constructed his diet, it was incredibly similar to a thesis that I defended as an undergraduate at Yale, looking at how we evolved from great apes into humans by a change in diet and a change in environment. And I defended that thesis. And believe it or not, there was the foundation for Big Ed's diet. Also, because I'm famous for protecting the heart during heart transplant and regular surgery, a lot of the compounds that Big Ed was swallowing from the health food store, I was using in the operating room to protect the heart. Only I was putting it down the veins and arteries of the heart, whereas Big Ed was swallowing them. Now, why that's poignant is, even though I was a world-famous heart surgeon, and a professor, and an academic researcher. I had horrible health issues. I was 70 pounds overweight, despite running 30 miles a day, going to the gym one hour a day, and eating a healthy, low-fat diet. I had high blood pressure, pre-diabetes, arthritis. I operated with migraine headaches. I had high cholesterol that I was told genetic. And when I met Big Ed and actually started following my thesis from Yale, and started taking a bunch of the supplements that I was throwing down the veins and arteries of the heart. I initially lost 50 pounds my first year. All of my issues went away. I subsequently lost another 20 pounds and have kept it off for almost 30 years now. In the process of doing this, I started teaching my patients who I operated on the foods that they 
should eat and the foods that they should avoid, and that they should go to Costco or Trader Joe's or a health food store, this was before Amazon, and buy certain supplements. And lo and behold, they began experiencing the same changes that I saw in myself. And on a fateful day in 2001, I realized that I had this backwards, that I shouldn't operate on people and then teach them how to eat to avoid me in the future. I should teach them how to eat first so that they would never have to encounter me in the future as a surgeon. So in a really stupid idea, I resigned my position at the top of my career and set up a clinic in Palm Springs, which is just down the road from Loma Linda, where I asked people to continue to help me with my research, to take away certain foods, to add certain foods, to add certain supplements. And we would do blood work on them every three months that Medicare or insurance would pay for. And I could track the changes. And I started publishing those changes in peer-reviewed journals. I started presenting my findings at the American Heart Association, at the American College of Cardiology, at the European Heart Association, and so on. I continue to this day to see patients six days a week, even on weekends. On the seventh day, I'm here at Gundry MD, communicating with you among other things, my findings. And so for the last nearly 30 years, my patients have taught me much of what I teach you, tens of thousands of them, either following what I ask them to do or maybe not following what I ask them to do, taking certain supplements that I ask them to go buy, maybe not taking those supplements or taking them and stopping them. And we could see these changes on blood work. About 80% of my practice now is autoimmune diseases, people who have tried everything. And as I publish in peer-reviewed journals, with a year's work in this program, 94% of people with autoimmune disease are in remission and off of all their medications. Over these years, I've become profoundly interested in gut health, which is remarkable for a heart surgeon who really thought gut health was something that I did as a general surgeon. But as Hippocrates said 2,500 years ago, all disease begins in the gut. And my mission to you is to convince you that all disease can be reversed in the gut, just like Big Ed did, just like everybody else. Now, since I can't meet with every person in the world, this podcast channel is one of the ways I've been able to reach millions of people and share practicable health advice. Now, despite my extensive experience in this field, technology is evolving, more studies are emerging, and therefore, I'm still learning. And if you've read my series of books, you'll notice that things I said in 2006, I don't say that anymore. And I think I'm one of the few people that say, hey, guess what? I've learned since 2005 this, 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 and this. I've seen in my patients since 2001 this, this, and this. And I've changed my mind about my recommendations based on these new findings, either that I've made or that others have made and then I've confirmed by doing that with my patients. So that's why I come out with a new book every couple years because there's new information that I want to share with you. And people notice that my books build on themselves. And my new book, Gut Check, is kind of the culmination of what I've learned so far. And I can guarantee you that there are changes in that book that are different than my first book, Dr. Gundry's Diet Evolution, or my most famous book, The Plant Paradox, and that series. And those changes are in that book because of the technology that's evolved to look at leaky gut, 
to look at the mechanisms of autoimmune disease, to look at what treats leaky gut and how you can prevent it. So Hippocrates was right, all disease begins in the gut, but what he didn't know is that all disease begins in a leaky gut. A hundred percent of my patients, with whatever they came in to see me for, when we test them, have leaky gut. A hundred percent of my patients, a hundred percent, have antibodies to the various forms of wheat, rye, and barley, which include gluten. Seventy percent of my patients have antibodies to corn, and so on and so forth. The great news is by following the steps of my program, 100% of people lose all their antibodies to wheat, rye, and barley within a year, 100%. And 100% of them stop having leaky gut. And that's exciting. And that's why I continue, even though I really don't have to, to see patients six days a week, even Saturday and Sunday, all day Saturday and Sunday because I want to give you and my patients the benefit of these tens of thousands of patients who have gone before you to give you my most current knowledge. Now, there are people who are spouting the same dietary advice that they spouted 30 years ago. Despite all the advancement in diagnostic tests, blood tests, and despite that a number of these experts don't actually treat patients. So it's one thing for me to tell you, hey, you shouldn't eat beef. Now, I could say that for moral issues, for humanitarian issues, for gas house emission issues, but that's not why I'm going to say that. And you'll see in the new book, there are really interesting reasons why maybe plain old everyday beef, lamb, and pork may not be high on the list of things you should consider eating. Is that my personal opinion? No, it's not. I grew up in Omaha, Nebraska. I have no dog in this fight. But the evidence accumulated through the years, both in my work and in others, have made it a very strong consideration for you to take. Again, you can take it or leave it, but at least I want you to be aware of why I have these opinions based on findings in my patients and in my research. You're going to be one of the first people to know if I find something interesting that you should know about, or if something that I've discovered working with my patients over the last few years, you should know this is pretty important. And I was wrong about this. Here's why I was wrong about it, and here's why I've changed my mind. It's not because I have a dog in the fight. Now, a few of you ask, why do I have these cue cards here? Well, like I said, I have a lot of information to share with you. And in between seeing patients six days a week, writing my books, presenting at meetings, and spending time with my wife and family, I really don't have a lot of time to film this content. So I write these cards ahead of time and make sure I say everything I want to say in a very short period of time. They do help me stay on track so that I can give you digestible information in a quick info-packed episode. And because I know you're busy as well. So if you're here because you're curious about me or you're new to the show, hopefully this has cleared up some of the uncertainty. I understand there's a lot of information out there, and it's hard to know who to trust. But if you're interested in the latest health information that's grounded in science, that's grounded in putting these concepts to work six days a week with patients, looking at the results of their blood work every three months, and noticing the changes, good or bad, with the interventions we've asked them to do, then that's what I'm going to give you. Now, if you disagree with that, I'll tell you what. Why don't you do a study for the next 25 to 30 years, seeing patients six days a week, 
report your results in a national meeting, publish your results, and then let's have a conversation. This is where the information is coming from on this channel, and I welcome you here. And I welcome your comments. Let's start a discussion. I want you to be able to say, I think you're full of it, Dr. G, and meat is the greatest thing in the whole world, and we were designed to eat meat. That's a great opinion, but let's back it up with facts and patient experience. Thanks for watching, but don't go anywhere. The next episode of the Dr. Gundry podcast is waiting for you now. Eat Less, Move More, which is promulgated for the last 40 years doesn't work, nor does it correlate with any scientific study on weight loss.